Coming to you live from the land of fruits, nuts, and flakes in the formerly once great state of California is Manny CA with another educational, informational, and hopefully entertaining video on a shooting sports where the taxpayer funded DNC abortions abound. Yet the Democrats don't have the guts to put our enemies in the ground. Only in California, where the ACLU and the DNC lets you rape, pillage, and plunder as long as it's under $950. Only in California, where faith is almost non-existent for our Lord and our citizens get murdered by the illegal hordes. Only in California, where the Pelosi and the Gavin Newsom ilk are enemies of our state. And I do say that very, with a very, very heavy tongue. They are the enemy within, bought and paid for by the global elites who want nothing more than to strip America of all their values. Those damn scumbags are gonna face a very rude awakening with all the voter rigging that goes on in this state. And if you don't believe me, check out the link below where they brainwashed everybody into getting free stuff. I was at the supermarket the other day and standing in front of me, there's a lady with a pile of crap checking out whipping out her welfare stamp card i follow her out and i see she gets into a brand new car huh funny isn't it no it's destruction by design but you can't really blame all the welfare folk can you if someone was giving you free stuff wouldn't you take it mm, maybe if you had low iqs like a lot of these people they bring in are but enough about all those happy subjects but that goes beyond the scope of our video you like how I kind of put my whole political view in there. I used to do a whole set of videos before that it was called like the Second Amendment update and nobody really watched them. So hey, I'm gonna include them in here. You get a twofer, it's a two for one. Everyone knows we on the channel love revolvers. Oh man, and we've been doing our accurate revolver series for the last couple of weeks, couple of months, I don't remember. Boom, why oh why would we overlook the 22 revolvers? Oh, look at this one. This is a Ruger, just a standard, plain Jane, Ruger single six. Look at the grips, aren't they pretty? Oh, those grips are nice. Uh, yeah, those aren't sandbar stag grips. Those are elk grips, pretty neat, huh? I had them leave a lot of the texturing on there just because I like the way it grip it feels. Feels good, looks cool, excellent. You can't overlook the Ruger single sixes or the Wrangler that's out now or uh, any of like the Charter Pathfinders or uh, any of those old Birdie 22s, the Stallions. Uh, those are all really, really cool. Or the Colt Diamondbacks. Yeah, those are all really, really cool 22s. And it's a revolver is kind of cool. We here at the channel love revolvers. You guys know that. Look back in our playlist. They're fun. They got character. Hey, don't get me wrong. We like black guns too. We believe the black gun is the universal musket of the modern era. And everybody should own 2,000 rounds of ammo. 1,000 for plinking and training with all year, and another thousand to put in your closet, kind of like a safety deposit in case anything happens. You never know. Aliens might land, and we might, uh, you know, need to defend from little green men from Mars or from a tyrannical government, hmm, like the founding fathers originally intended. Hmm. Remember, the Second Amendment wasn't for self defense or for hunting. So, we're going to take our revolver and we're going to chamfer our forcing cone with 11 degree bevel, but we're gonna do a before and after test, like before. But this time, we're doing it in the field. Because I got tired of going back and forth. I'm lazy, what do you want? I'm old. I gotta take my pills at noon and take my nap at two. Oh, and my warm prune juice at four and then dinner. Hey, did you hear that the ACLU has now declared the term boogaloo as a right wing extremist term and it's verboten? Boogaloo, boogaloo, boogaloo. Or you could just say big igloo. These people are idiots. Boogaloo refers to the second coming civil war. And they think that it's just white extremists. <laughs> white extremists. <laughs> it's for any freedom loving American out there. I don't care what color you are. A lot of us don't care what color you are. If you believe in a strong second amendment and any of the civil rights, the first 10 amendments of the constitution people, remember that. If you believe in any of that, then you're a Boogaloo supporter and you're on their watch list. Oh, I know I'm on a watch list somewhere. I'm pretty sure I am. First, we're gonna shoot some Blazer because everybody has Blazer. And if you don't, why don't you? You're a commie. Kill a commie for mommy. Remember that? Next up, we're gonna shoot some Arms Corps. 
This is plated, a little bit higher velocity, just to see what the gun likes better. Ooh, and never to be outdone. We've got some of the Federal Black Packs. Remember this? They were on sale a couple years back and with a killer rebate. I hope you guys pick some up, see how they shoot. And then we're gonna go through, we're gonna do our reaming, and we'll show you a couple other tricks you can do with these guns. Stay tuned. Needless to say, you want your firearm to be squeaky clean for this. Make sure you clean the chambers and your bore. Moving on to the arms core. All right, here's our blazer group. And already I'm seeing a preference toward the blazer. Of course, the arm score is high velocity. And there's the arm score group. Up next, we're gonna shoot a subsonic hollow point lead bullet. Uh, this would be a great substitute for any other subsonic lead, like CCI, if you guys have it, or um, uh, maybe like a Norma CCI, uh, just to see just to get a general reference point on what this particular gun likes between lead and copper wash. Next up, the Federal Black Pack that were on sale all over the US with a great rebate a couple years back. All right, here we marked up, this is our RWS Subsonics before, and you can see that group, nice tight group. Of course, you could say that the Subsonics always group better than high velocity, and here you can see the high velocity Subson, uh, I'm sorry, the high velocity Federal Black Pack uh, just opened up. Very interesting, very, and just so you guys can have something as a reference, there's a uh, Sharpie pen that you can see, or a marker, marks a lot, just so you can see how big that circle is. Okay, so just as before, we're gonna be using an 11 degree chamfer cutter, all right? And if you guys have seen our previous videos, you kind of know how this goes. It's small, Oh, look how cute it is. 11 degree. With the other one, you can do from 38 to 45 cal. With this one, this is just 22 caliber specific. Since I don't make a reamer for this, and I really don't advise, you know, the, I don't advise you guys to ream this out with a non-specific reamer. And when I say that, I know that a lot of tool makers make a reamer. Uh, just because most of the time they're fine. And you can double check this by taking, this is a Nosler bullet, taking a 22, a 223 bullet, unfired, and pushing it through and seeing what happens. They should, with just finger pressure, pop right through. You see that? Okay. And we've tested this before. And they pop right through every chamber, which is good. There's no swaging going on on our bullet. So we know our cylinder is cool. Our cylinder is good. And remember, again, this is just to affect lead bullets. This has the best accuracy on lead bullets. When you're doing something with the jacketed copper, it really doesn't matter because the copper is harder. The lead is softer and tends to smear. So when you shoot it, What's happening is it's hitting a forcing cone. And when you hit the forcing cone repeatedly after, you know, 10 rounds, 20 rounds, 30 rounds, depends on how much lead you're using, what kind of bullet you're using. It tends to develop a buildup around here. And what happens is after that fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth bullet, it'll shoot out the lead, clearing the obstruction. And then it kind of just builds up all over again. What does that mean? That means bad accuracy for every 10th shot, every 15th shot, maybe every 100th shot. Who knows? Depends on your ammo and your gun and how smooth your chamfering cone is. A lot of these chamfering cones are crap. It's because, as we explained before, when they put these on, these production guns, by the way, and like we said, nothing wrong with production guns. But what happens is they put these on and they've got to square this up 12 o'clock to the rear sight. They'll take these barrels 
and they screw the barrels on and if they don't line up uh, line up just right they take them off they do a little bit of cutting right here and they keep doing that until they get it correctly then they'll take a cutter and they cut the back of this so whatever forcing cone was cut to begin with it's gone or severely reduced or crooked in some cases i've seen them crooked that's pretty sad but again they're production guns one thing you're gonna need to get some 22 caliber specific rods for the gun i really don't like to go into company specifics because we're all self-funded here we pay for everything and nobody pays or gives us much and when they do we make sure we tell you guys but there's a company out there that makes three different types of rods they go from 0 0.211 213 and 215 you need to find which one your gun likes on the ruger single actions it's 0.215 this is the 0.215 rod and you can see how it goes into the bore and you want the tightest rod so that way you get the cleanest cut and uh, i know i hear a lot of guys talking about oh don't put anything in the muzzle that's steel well this is steel and we're not jamming it in there so we're okay don't worry about it you got to be kind of gentle with the threads on this thing chamfering cone the cutter is really thin we're going to add a little bit of lube to our cutter give it some light pull pressure and you're going to be turning clockwise people nice and easy a couple of turns and take it out and you can see we're cutting you see that we've got some we've got some shavings already you want to cut clean to the lands and grooves in our previous video we had a guide on the front that would center it in the bore but with the 22 you can't do that because it's too small we we'll use a little bit of our canned air help blow out some of those chips because we don't want those we don't want that going back down the bore let's check out our chamfering cone oh that's nice look at that technicolor look at it. there you go you see how we cut that all the way down and that didn't even take all that much work i'm not gonna put all these tools away before i lose them that's one of the biggest fears out in the field another thing upon assembling your revolver i like to hit the ratcheting area right there with a good quality gun grease i also like to put some on the pin let's see how we did All right, now on to our plated bullets. We're gonna start off with our Federal Black Pack here. It's a copper wash bullet. Uh, I think they're going about 1300 feet per second. These are the ones that they say are a repacks of mini mags, which is really cool because they run awesome. I mean, really awesome in our 1022. This is our B4 group. And that's our after group. Uh, I gotta say it closed up really nicely. You see that? So I think it worked. Even though this gun does not seem to like the high velocity rounds. Now onto our RWS subsonic hollow point, which is just a lead bullet. And here's our before group. There's our after group. I really don't see a change. Um, I don't know, maybe it could have been me shooting. Yeah, we have to do some more testing on that. On to the arms core. Copper wash bullet, high velocity, 36 grainer. The gun doesn't seem to like this one at all. Here's before. And you can see how that one grouped. And then after, a little bit tighter. Yeah, a little bit tighter. But still not, I wouldn't shoot it for, you know, if I was shooting like a match or something like that. And then our blazer. Here's a blazer everyone's favorite lead round there's our before group and there's our after group significant improvement people look at that very nice and these are all at 25 yards off arrest because i want to eliminate human error and again 
the RWS is the one that really kind of mm, I'm not happy with and I'd have to go into more extensive testing but I think that maybe just doesn't like this particular gun a lot of times when people talk about guns being finicky I think it's more has to do with the shooter than anything what everyone think improvement I thought it was and this is just like a quick and dirty cursory shooting it's not like we spent all day out here uh, shooting groups just to see which one it liked the best we took out four boxes of ammo two plated two lead just to see which one it liked I think it did pretty good heck I think it did more than pretty good it cleaned up this old production gun I'm happy with it I think it was well worth the effort oh yeah and before where you would see a little bit of lead being built up around the beginning of the forcing cone there's none there there's no buildup there's no buildup now on the forcing cone where before you would see it I think our goal has been achieved we've accurized this gun and this gun dates from the 70s people that's how old this one is and it shoots very very nice it shot nice before I think it shoots even better now remember use a 223 bullet to check your cylinders to make sure they're not tight they shouldn't be and then use the proper diameter 11 degree cone made for the 22 rim fire you're going to have to get the appropriate rod for your gun now i know the single sixes take this 0.215 diameter rod and i know the bearcat does too and i'm going to assume the wrangler does even though we haven't had a chance to try it on the wrangler now your smith k22s uh, aka the 617s can take the 0.213 it takes a different rod it's a smaller just a tad small and i think it's because the lands and grooves are a little bit different now your cimarron your emfs uh, like your stallions your thunders they could take the 0.215 inch diameter remember there's three different diameters 0.211 and 0.215 you need to find which diameter fits in your gun uh heritage chiapa uberti i have no idea which one they'll take i'm assuming that like the uh the ruger lcr if you wanted to do that but i really wouldn't recommend chamfering the forcing cone on the lcr because it looks really really thin uh, most of those are self-defense guns anyway so you wouldn't want to stick to a high quality jacketed or coated round not really jacketed but a coated round mm, let's see uh charter arms pathfinder the taurus tracker uh what else? oh the colt diamondback we're not too sure you're gonna have to find out which size diameter rod you need or just buy all three so you have them in case anything ever comes up the tools are expensive but you get what you pay for plus buy ones cry ones they last forever you could do dozens upon dozens of guns get with a buddy get with a club go into a group buy buy one pass it around have everybody split the cost it's the way you can do these things and i just showed you how to do it use the video as reference email the links to all like-minded patriots and for god's sakes people we're fighting a battle against the commies you gotta subscribe and you gotta share the links to get the info out Till next time good shooting have fun and be safe it's a dangerous world people and don't forget folks eat your fruits and veggies